Today I'm gonna show this coil again. This time I have a 36 pole rotor, as you can see here. The magnets are uh, the same size as uh, from the 24 pole rotor at uh, 2800 RPM. But this time I have 36 magnets on the rotor. Uh, I will be driving this system at around um, 1830-ish RPM. Let me start it up. It is saying here 28 volts, but when it's up to speed it will be around 29.5 uh, volts DC. At around uh, this meter here, I think it was 1.2 amps. Because of this larger rotor, the diameter is uh, larger, the system does need more energy to uh, spin it up. But the coil is, uh, yeah, is uh, performing pretty well at that speed. Let me get it started up. Give a little spin by hand, as always. First speed. While it's spinning up, uh, today I'm not doing any AC testing, only DC. I'm gonna step the voltage down in this transformer to the rectifier, the meters over here. Then I'm gonna do a 1.2 watt load. Then I'm also gonna unscrew one of these so you can see uh, this half a watt load and also a 5 what load and then I'm gonna short the DC output and last the capacitor let me go for second speed the reason why the voltmeter is higher when the system is driving than it's when it's uh, not uh, driving the, the rotor is because the DC to DC converter is just trying to yeah keep up with what the system is needing and this is also because since I added each large capacitor as buffer capacitors to the transformer transformer is connected to the grid to get me roughly yeah 15 volt DC and that 15 volt is going to the converter as I can adjust that from anything from 18 to 35 something like that Going for third speed, which is overdrive. I'm also going to do a test with this capacitor here uh, later on. This capacitor, uh, when, it's, when I put it on the high side of the EC power, uh, it does give me more output on the DC side. But uh, it does also something with the RPM, which isn't, which isn't that bad at all, so uh, uh, we'll see. Let me check the RPM now. 1740 and climbing. We're going to let it reach uh, 1800. Yeah, say 1825. Then we'll begin the testing. Yeah, the voltage will be stable around 29.5 and the input amps is 1.2 amps. So the system is drawing around, uh, um, yeah, something like 35 watts with this rotor here. The view from this side. Let's check the RPM again, so we can start the testing. A325, boy. Uh, gonna, gonna start up with the 1.2 watt load. Connecting the output. 1.2 watt load, two light bulbs lit up. 3.4 volt DC at 
150 milliamps let's check the rpm hope you guys can see that rpm is now 8350 so it has increased a little bit which is nice I'm gonna unscrew one of the light bulbs because uh, then you will see the maximum output of this coil over here it's gonna be much brighter the output is now 5.5 sorry 8.5 volt DC at 120 milliamps which is uh, pretty good and the RPM A348 47 it is dropping a bit but it is still higher than uh, the startup RPM which is not bad A345 pretty stable there now I'm gonna go for the 5 watt load It's barely lit up, just slightly, at 2.7 volts, DC at let's say 160 milliamps, let's check the RPM again, uh, 1,860, 1,860 RPM. And the input is now 29.4 at yeah still roughly the same 1.2 amps input now I'm gonna short the DC output shorted milliamps is 180 or 170 milliamps let's see what the RPM is doing now a 376 and still climb a little bit now I'm going to introduce this capacitor over here into the system let me connect it back to the 1.2 watt load there's the 1.2 watt load again now the output with this 1.2 watt load is 4.2 volt DC at yeah 170 milliamps and without it as you can see it is now without it I bypass the capacitor without the capacitor it is 3.4 at 150 milliamps with the capacitor it is 4.2 at 1 yeah 170 milliamps the capacitor gave me more output but it makes the system drop back down to the starting uh, to the start rpm as you can see it is dropping slowly but steady a 339 and I start testing it around 825 RPM even though it's dropping a little bit the output is better now with the capacitor I'm gonna unscrew one of these but there's a chance that the other one will blow up so I hopefully it doesn't blow up soon so you can see the voltage only one of these there it is voltage now 9.7 volt at 130 milliamps if you compare the numbers from with the capacitor now and without the capacitor with the capacitor I have more output over here on the DC side but it does bring the system back to the starting RPM as you can see here it is now 1827 rpm 8328 
so it's not bad. All in all, this is a pretty good uh, progress. Um, normally, I have to spin the 24 pole rotor at 2800 RPM, uh, roughly 27, 28, to get this kind of effect. This road here is only turning at uh, 1825 RPM or 30. With uh, and the output is much better now than the test I did with the 24 pole at higher RPM. Not the not the last video with the uh, 24 pole at uh, lower RPM. Uh, the other video, one of my previous video, I don't remember which one. But it was the one with the 24 pole at uh, 2800 RPM, something like that. Input is now 29.4 at 1.2 amps. Let's check the RPM again. 8329, not bad. Let's short the DC output over here. It's shorter now with the capacitor shorted it's 200 milliamps and the output is sorry the RPM is climbing again which is nice but shorting is nothing because uh, only a milliamps with no volts is absolutely nothing now I'm loading it up with the 5 Watt load 3.2 volts at 180 milliamps. Let me go for the uh, capacitor now. I'm filling now the capacitor. You can see the voltage over here when it reaches 10 volt. This one, this digital. Uh, meter over here will also uh, uh, turn on. Let's check the RPM. The RPM is a little bit lower now, 822 and decreasing. So there is a catch filling the capacitor, filling the large capacitor with the small capacitor on the high side of the EC line is not a really a good idea. 8308 let me bypass this capacitor and let's see now what the RPM is doing. It's pretty steady at 1810. Okay, that's the voltage in the capacitor. So filling the capacitor does make the system run at a bit lower RPM than the startup RPM. Now I'm going to disconnect the coil completely uh, remove the capacitor over here the coil is now completely open gonna remove this wire also gonna only connect this one check in the RPM a 329 830 connecting the uh, yes going for one light bulb to get the maximum output which is now 8.4 at 120 milliamps and the rpm is a 337 pretty steady gonna bring back once again this capacitor 
into it. Output is now higher, 9.9 .9 at 130 milliamps. The uh, RP the RPM was 8337 and it is now 8318 and decreasing. It is decreasing a little bit but not much so the capacitor in line with the high side of the AC fault does help. It does put a little bit more drag on the system but not much. So this capacitor isn't that bad but it is best to do without it because without it you see it's completely uh, removed now. Cables from the coil are going directly to the transformer. Only one light bulb. Output is uh, 8.4 at 120 milliamps. What is the RPM doing? 1835, yeah, that's nice. This, that is, uh, the output is uh, 8.5 times 120 milliamps. That's, yeah, precisely one watt. So I'm getting down out of one of these files, one watt. The system is using 29.4 at 1.2 watt amps. This is 29.4, 1.2 is 35 watts. So yeah, it's look. It seems like I'm ready to make a complete generator, but that's not completely true. And I'm gonna show you now because I need to do one more test. This test should have been done a long time ago, but I completely forgot about it. I am moving. I am removing on the transformer. The coil is completely open now. Gonna let the system speed up uh, to its maximum RPM. Eight three hundred and thirty-six. Yeah, that seems like it. Yeah, 835. Okay, let's say that's the maximum RPM. 835. What I'm gonna do now is remove the coil completely. I am removing the coil now. There's a coil, here is where the coil normally sits. This coil is an air core coil, but it still puts some drag on the system. I have seen that in some of my other coils, but I completely forgot to do the test with this one also. And here you will see that the system without the coil in place is running at a higher RPM. Let's check it now. This is now, as you can see, 9330 RPM and increasing. 9335, yes, that is, that's almost, no, that is already 100 RPM more than without the coil. So even though that is an air core coil, it is putting some drag on the system. If it, if it wasn't for that uh, small issue, I will be starting to make the complete generator because there's a, about 30 watts going in the system 35 watts sorry 35 watts going in the system and I can put 36 coils and if each coil gave me one watt yeah it's kind of unity 
not bad you have to begin somewhere but since this small issue here I don't think I will be doing that the RPM is now 9356 so that is roughly 120 RPM more without the coil uh, what will uh, what I will be doing is making another coil like this but a little um, nicer this is a pretty crappy one and to put them side by side and test them to see if one coil makes the system um, go down about 120 rpm what does two coils do and so on and so on I need to know that before I can continue 1960 so that's roughly um, 1960 1960 minus uh, 1835 125 rpm more so if I put the coil in place the system slow down 125 rpm without any load on the coil when I load the coil without this capacitor the rpm goes up a little bit to around 1850 oh yeah there's a possibility here okay I think I've shown enough and said enough so next step will be um, to see what I can do with this coil so I can work without slowing the system down when it's open and I will also make a video from this coil on this coil here with this rotor gonna shut the system down I mean down um, yes that's about it hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching